Good evening, you're watching the news from the Sultan of Oman television. First, the headlines. His Majesty the Sultan's condolences and sympathy on the death of His Highness the Deputy Ruler of Fujairah are conveyed by His Excellency the Minister of Interior. The new pricing of oil products for April 2017 witnessed a slight decrease. And the NATO Secretary General says an ambassador-level meeting with Russia was long and constructive, but warned it was marked by clear disagreements. Those were the headlines and now the news in detail. His Majesty the Sultan condolences and sympathy on the death of His Highness Sheikh Hamid bin Asif al Sharki, Deputy Ruler of Fujairah, were conveyed by His Excellency Sayyid Hamoud bin Faisal al Busaidi, Minister of Interior, Envoy of His Majesty the Sultan, when he was received in a Ramila Palace by His Highness Sheikh Hamid bin Mohammed al Sharki, Member of the Supreme Council of the United Arab Emirates and Ruler of Fujairah. His Highness the Ruler of Fujairah expressed his gratitude and thanks to His Majesty the Sultan for condolences and sympathy on the deceased, asking Almighty Allah to protect His Majesty and the Omani people against all harms. The Ministry of Oil and Gas announced the new pricing of oil products for April 2017 as they witnessed a slight decrease. The sell price of M95 reached 192 baser for litre. The price of M91 reached 180 baser per litre and the price of one litre of diesel reached 200 baser. The tender committee at the Ministry of Housing during its meeting awarded more than 1.2 million Omani rials for the completion of housing units at Batna Coastal Project. The tender also included the completion of the remaining construction works for other 24 housing units in the Wilaya of Saham in the Governorate of North Batna. The committee's meeting was chaired by His Excellency Engineer Saif bin Amr al Shakse, Under Secretary of the Ministry of Housing. Topics related to residential districts, public facilities and evacuation and aid plans during adverse weather conditions were discussed at the third meeting of the Municipal Council in the Governorate of Baremi. The Council also discussed the participation of the Governorate's wilayas in the competition of Municipalities Month and their preparedness for this event. The meeting also discussed views about sites to be allocated for tourism sector. UN Chief Antonio Guterres appealed today for more aid and international solidarity for the people of Mosul as he visited a camp for Iraqis displaced by the fighting with militants. Guterres told journalists during a visit to the Hassan Sham camp that they don't have the resources that are necessary to support those people and they don't have the international solidarity that is needed. Guterres is on the second day of a visit to Iraq after meeting with top officials, including Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi in Baghdad yesterday. His visit comes as Iraqi forces battle to retake second city Mosul, which was seized by the Daesh group in 2014. The fighting has sparked major humanitarian concerns, killing hundreds of civilians and displacing more than 200,000 since the operation to retake the city's western side began last month. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported today that the Russian-backed Syrian army had recaptured 16 villages lost to insurgents last week near Hama. Syrian government forces have been counter-attacking in the area that is the critical importance of President Bashar al-Assad. The rebel assault has been spearheaded by Tahrir al-Sham, an alliance of jihadist groups, including al-Qaeda's former affiliate in the Syrian war. The Nusra Front Free Syrian Army rebels group are also taking part. Government tanks and rocket launchers targeted areas north of Hama as government forces fight to reverse insurgents' biggest assault in months. 
U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson passed NATO allies today to ramp up military spending and denounced Russia's aggression in Ukraine, touching the Trump administration's turn towards Moscow. Tillerson delivered the message as he met fellow NATO foreign ministers for the first time ahead of the May 25th summit to be attended by leaders, including President Donald Trump. Tillerson urged his fellow foreign ministers in Brussels to agree at the May summit to produce plans by the end of the year to meet the spending pledge. NATO countries including agreed at the summit in the Wells in 2014 to contribute the equivalent of 2% of the gross domestic product to defense. Seeking the new line to underfunding role, NATO chief Jens Stolberg has sought the play down concerns that truth is less committed in the 28 nation alliance than his predecessors. NATO Secretary General Jens Stolberg said that an ambassador-level meeting with Russia yesterday was long and constructive, but warned it was marked by clear disagreements. This is the fourth meeting of NATO envoys since the 2014 crisis in Ukraine halted regular talks, although both sides continue to accuse each other of disabling Eastern Europe. The NATO-Russian Council, the forum bringing NATO together, ambassadors and Russia's top diplomat to the U.S.-led alliance, is seen as a way to prevent tensions escalating by explaining each other's positions even when joint exercises and peacekeeping have been suspended. Russia is concerned about NATO's deployment of some 4,000 troops to the Baltic states and Poland as whom they already in place and, and rest to due to June. The alliance will seek to provide reassurance that the rebuild up its defense. At least 22 people were killed and 57 wounded today when a car bomb tore through a market in an area of Pakistan's tribal belt. Survivors described hiding inside shops after hearing a huge bang, then stumbling through dust-shocked air filled with the sound of screams tripping over bodies as they searched for the wounded in the busy market in Parachinar, capital of Quram tribal district. Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif condemned the attack urging complete inhalation of the terrorism in Pakistan. But religious leaders and residents angered by the attack, the second major blast in Paranchinar this year, quickly accused security forces of failure with a small spontaneous protest numbering dozens of people breaking out. Jamaat al ahrar a, a faction of Pakistan Taliban, swiftly claimed the attack. Karam is one of Pakistan's seven semi-autonomous tribal districts, which is governed according to the local laws and customs. Still to come in our news bulletin. With the aim to stress on efforts exerted by women in voluntary work field, the Bosha Women Team is inaugurated in Muscat. Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. The Assessment and Follow-up Committee of the Scouts and Guides Excellence Competition, the Supreme Scouts Cup, continued its visit to competing schools in various governorates in the Sultanate. The committee visited a number of schools in the governorates of Musandam. The competition came to embody the royal care of His Majesty Sultan in the Scouts and Guides movement in the Sultanate. It is an annual contest among all Scouts commissions in the Directorate General of Education in various governorates of the Sultanate. The visited schools showed the best performance of their scouts and guides in planning and implementing works, applying the scouts' traditions and norms, and activating all issues related to scouts' movement.
The Public Authority for Crafts Industries, represented by its directorate in the government of North Batna Market, the Omani Artesian Day. The exhibition was organized on this occasion, displaying more than 500 handicraft items. It showcased various crafts industries practiced in the government of North Batna that include date palm front works, making of frankincense, silverware and copper works. The day came to highlight the role of craft industries and the need to preserve them. After three months of competition, Youth Radio ended its Taranim Al Sigar contest, a sign for children's songs. 20 participants were qualified for the final competition. They presented songs on the love of the homeland and its great leader. At the conclusion ceremony, the three winners in the contest were announced as the pair audience voting and aberration committee decision. A ceremony was held in the governorate of Muscat for the inauguration of Bosher Women Team. It witnessed a participation from honorable members of the state and Shura Council, as well as members of the society. It included a number of sections for productive families, craftsmen, and as well as pavilions for tourism and photography, in addition to some charity associations. During the event, the participants enjoyed some artist performance by the school students and poetic sessions. The event came to stress on the efforts exerted by women in voluntary work filled in addition to supporting small and medium-sized enterprises. The ceremony was presided over by Her Excellency Sheikha Aisha bin Khalfan as Shabia, chairperson of the Public Authority for Craft Industries. Now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate, clear skies will prevail over the northern governorates with chances of cloud accumulation over Hajar Mountains. Winds will be south to south easterly to moderate. Seas will be slight with a maximum wave height of 1.25 meters. This is the Southern of the Forman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. His Majesty the Sultan's condolences and sympathy on the death of His Highness, the Deputy Ruler of Fujaira, are conveyed by His Excellency, the Minister of Interior. The new pricing of oil products for April 2017 witnessed a slight decrease. And the NATO Secretary General says an ambassador-level meeting with Russia was long and constructive, but one it was marked by clear disagreements. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin from all of us here at the studios and the newsroom. It's good night.